right. Um, hello everyone. I'm Mathieu Besançois and I'll be talking today about Frank Wolf algorithms and more specifically the Frank Wolf .jl package we've been developing with colleagues Alejandro and Sebastian um, at the Susan Institute in Berlin. Um, so first I'll represent or present uh, Frank Wolf algorithms uh, depending on how you how familiar you are with them uh, and then move on to the package itself and why you might care. All right. Um, so what are the problems we're considering? So first, uh, Frank Wolf is for tackling optimization problems, and more specifically, uh, nonlinear optimization problems uh, subject to some convex constraints. Uh, and the uh, one special thing about Frank Wolf is the way we handle or consider these convex constraints. Um, so we tackle them by solving linear problems over the same set. So this means that a key requirement is that optimizing a linear function over this set C here is much easier than solving the original problem P with a nonlinear function. So we'll call this step of solving a linear function over uh, the set C uh, the linear minimization oracle or LMO. Um, so the model we consider with Frank Wolf is a bit going in the other direction from uh, in the opposite direction from uh, conic optimization, uh, where you would consider l always optimizing or often optimizing a linear function subject to affine constraints and um, variables in uh, variable in cone. So the cone is some uh, unbounded set by nature, and so you optimize over the intersection with some affine subspace and a linear function. While here, so for Frank Wolf algorithms, we keep the nonlinearities in the objective function, or if we have some in the objective function at least, uh, it's not a problem. We don't need to pass them to constraints as with uh, conic optimization. And uh, we consider this set C that has to be easily uh, linearly optimizable over. So we, and more specifically, we consider that C is compact and convex, unlike cones. So we have some uh, some set where, in any linear direction, we will not have some unbounded ray. All right. Um, so I move on to present what is the actual algorithm. So Frank Wolf algorithm. It's fairly quick to present. Um, so I first have this blueprint here, uh, that's intentionally vague because you can switch different components. Uh, and then we'll see how it works with some uh, some illustration. So starting from an initial point x0, we at each iteration, we try to find a first order estimate of the, of a function. So that is, if you have access to the gradient, then you would use the gradient of a function. And more specifically, um, yeah, and otherwise, if you don't, then you would use like some stochastic gradient, uh, gradient estimation. Then, so using this direction, uh, we will try to minimize, so in this dt, um, we'll, so we'll try to find the minimum of this uh, linear function over the whole set. So this is the linear minimization step, uh, providing us with some vertex of the set C, some extreme point of, of the set C. Uh, once we have this, then we'll try to find a, an appropriate step from the current iterate xt and to, uh, towards the, the new extreme point vt. So if your step is zero, then you stay at xt. If your step is one, you would go all the way to vt. And so that's your new iterate. And then you just uh, rinse and repeat and you until convergence is met or some other crit criterion. All right, uh, so what does it look like in pictures? Uh, so we are at our current iterate xt and we move in the negative of the gradient here. Or at least we consider the negative of a gradient as our initial direction. So this is our blue arrow, and we'll try now the LMO step to minimize in the direction of the arrow over the whole set C. And so in that case, so if we try to minimize over the C here, we'll arrive at this extreme point, uh, VT. And uh, so this is our the, the result of our LMO. And so the the actual descent direction is VT minus XT. So this is going towards VT here. While if you were doing gradient, uh, simple gradient descent, so ignoring C, you would just stop at the first step and consider the blue arrow here as your descent direction. And so here we have our new VT, so we can move towards this point by a given step size and end up at some new iterate here, and then recompute the gradient and recompute the new extreme point and continue like that. Uh, one interesting property you might notice from now is if you start from an extreme point, so if your x0 is an extreme point of C, 
given that you just add some convex combination of a current iterate and some other extreme point, uh, by recurrence, all the iterates of the Frankel diagram will be some convex combination of extreme points of C. Uh, which might be very interesting for some properties like sparsity of the iterate, for example. If all of your extreme points are sparse, then, well, you have um, more chance of having a sum of them being also sparse. Uh, so the key difficulty in Frank Wolf, or the key characteristic that can make something suitable for Frank Wolf is how hard is it to optimize a linear function over this set. Uh, and so if you have a completely generic polytope, uh, so some AX smaller or equal to B with A a matrix and B a vector, uh, then you can use any linear optimization method. So you can use the simplex or interior point methods or anything that are that's available in Julia. Um, otherwise, uh, the thing is for many simpler polytopes, you do have closed form solutions. Uh, for example, for the LP for any LP norm, you know how to compute for a given linear uh, direction. You know how to compute the solution. So we know how to compute the, the extreme point. Um, and so we can specialize for for this, and we can specialize for other special polytopes. And for many classes of problems, you do have like very generic functions, but optimized over very simple sets. Uh, well, like the the L1 or LP norm or a simplex uh, or a simplex, yeah. And finally, uh, one last interesting property is that uh, you don't require an explicit formulation of this polytope. Uh, you just require a black box computation of this extreme point. You just need the VT. You don't need to know how the VTs are computed at every iteration. And so this means, for example, that we can optimize over the convex hull of mixed integer problems with a non with a nonlinear function, because we don't need the representation of the convex hull of this uh, mixed integer feasible set. We just need to have these actual extreme points and these are solutions of calling uh, mixed integer linear solver. All right. Um, so that's about it for Frank Wolf itself. And now I'll move on to present more of the, the package. So frankwolf.jl. Um, so one issue or one product with Frank Wolf algorithms is that they are deceptively simple and because of that, nobody will uh, spontaneously think of uh, getting a new solver, uh, a solver for this, and we'll just re-implement everything every time. But the trick is, so you do have a bit of complexity and a bit of nuance to bring, and you have you can have variations and potential bugs in your implementations if everyone is re-implementing it for their own paper or their own research. And so the goal here is is uh, double on, on this toolbox. So first we want the uh, central toolbox for practitioners who are looking for a simple, robust, and scalable uh, method for nonlinear optimization. So they want to optimize over some simple set or they want to regularize using some simple set. Uh, then they would come to this package and everything is already there. And the second target is researchers working on optimization methods and particularly working on Frankov type of methods. Uh, so that they can develop their new components and uh, also compare against a state of the art that's been worked on for quite some time. So that's our toolbox. All right. So naturally, so this uh, so Frankwolf.gl is implemented in Julia. Uh, we leverage like the generic types. So to, for example, work on reduced precision, which was useful for some researchers working on uh, other hardware systems, for instance, and also extended precision because well, some problems were numerically challenging and challenging, and having a numer extended numerical precision helped a lot to first validate that our result was was correct, like the floating point ones, and also to tackle some problems where we knew that we wouldn't get as good with um, with um, standard floating point numbers. We have a memory saving mode and an out of place mode with memory saving being the default uh, to be able to avoid allocations at every iteration. And so we've observed also on challenging problems that the package does scale well these days so now. Uh, so we've tried it with problems with one, one billion variables and it did work. It did converge to a solution, to the solution. And finally, so I insist once more on that, so you can switch components. So you can bring your own linear minimization oracle or gradient computation or step size. Um, so you can on, not only bring your own components, but you can also uh, try out different variants that we have. So diff different, completely different functions that will not correspond exactly all to the same blueprint of, of the Frank Wolf algorithm I presented before.
So you have the default Frank Wolf, uh, you have the away step Frank Wolf, which is one of the key variants that's often referred to in the literature. Uh, and we also have blended uh, conditional gradient, which is another one uh, that's uh, yet extending and pushing further the ideas of, of a waste step. And we have a stochastic version of Frank Wolf, uh, which you would, you would use when the gradients and function evaluations are very expensive. And so in that case, you would just use an imperfect evaluation of your gradient or an imperfect estimation of your gradient at every iteration instead of the exact one. And a waste step and blended conditional gradients in particular are uh, very useful when your linear minimization oracle are uh, expensive to compute because you avoid you avoid recomputing them multiple times when you, when you can save some steps. Right, uh, I wanted to also illustrate why a waste step and other uh, variants are can be interesting compared to the standard Frank Wolf algorithm, and I'll just do that over this simple problem. So we're trying to optimize this quadratic like function over some hyperbox, and we're starting from the top left corner here. And so with Frank Wolf, you would uh, so try to find an improving direction. And so you will move in the direction of the bottom corner, bottom right corner here. And then you'll alternate with the left corner. And so you continue like this. So alternating between the left and the right bottom corners um, at every iteration. And as you see, as we get closer to the, to the actual solution, one issue is that your, uh, your search directions become more and more orthogonal to x star and so you can you're converging uh, slower and slower as you as you come to the optimum um, and on the other way so this this on the right is now illustrating the away step Frank Wolf where we first do the same thing by trying to get to the bottom right corner and then to the bottom left corner but after x2 what happens is that so a waste step rank wolf can move not only towards one of the vertices of a feasible set but it can also move away from one of the vertices that you've already explored or that are already in your so-called active set and so in that case from x2 you can move away from x0 and this gives you a much better direction to move towards uh, one of the to move towards x star here and so you can improve uh, theoretical but also effective convergence rates uh, through these away steps. All right, uh, even more variants. Uh, so again, I insist uh, you can bring your own components and we actually did that for one of the research papers we had or one of the research projects. So we extended the Frank Wolf package without touching it itself. So we just redefined some new step sizes and some new LMOs. Um, so of course you can always uh, redefine the way your first order estimate uh, is computed. You can redefine, uh, well, new types for the LMOs and the step sizes. And once you have these new types, the only thing you, get, you need to do is implement the corresponding method. So either compute extreme point for the LMO or compute the step for the step size strategy. All right, um, I wanted to give you a quick example of how to use the package first. Uh, so this would be like a very standard one uh, with, without any surprises. So we're trying to minimize some quadra uh, some quadratic functions, some gap between x and the fixed point y, uh, subject to x be belonging to the unit simplex. So here I'll first define my objective function and the corresponding gradient. So here the gradient will be computed in place, as you notice, so you pass a storage to it, uh, and the, the result of x minus y, so the result of the gradient is assigned to the storage. Right, and once you have the function and gradient, the only thing you need to do is so define your linear minimization oracle. So in that case, uh, so this will be my probability simplex oracle with a radius of one, um, and my initial point, which will be also an extreme point of the of a feasible set, so of the LMO. Now, once I have all these, I can just call uh, Frank Wolf uh, with a function gradient LMO x zero, and then some additional parameters if I want. And what I what this will return is so first the final x, so the final iterate, my final, my last computed vertex also, so the, the last extreme point of a, um, of a polytope that was computed, the primal value of the objective function, dual gap, and so on. Right, uh, what if I have, let's say, funky constraints, as in this is not a standard closed form like I have, for example, I have a known form, but I modified it a bit, so it's not really a simplex anymore, or it's not really a L1 ball anymore, and I do need to express it with richer constraints. 
So in that case, uh, what we've been doing is working on the Matplotlib interface. So for those who don't know, uh, Matplotlib interface is like a gluing package that can link uh, modeling uh, modeling systems like Jump or Convex.gl on one side, and optimization solvers like uh, linear optimization solvers, mixed integer solvers, conic solvers on the other side. And so this is a common exp API for expressing structured uh, constrained optimization problems. And so in that case, uh, what I what I do here is I just use uh, MOI, so Matplotlib interface directly with one of the linear solvers, which is GLPK. I could also define my problem using Jump or convex.gl. And so in that case, I'll just define an optimizer and I will express my constraints using uh, MOI. And so I add variables, and then add some uh, bound constraints on the variables, and then add a final um, linear or a final linear constraint, which is that the sum of the variables uh, is equal to uh, to my radius. And so in that case, this is effectively a uh, 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 probability simplex with a given radius. And finally, so I have my optimizer that now encodes all my constraints, and I will just pass this to my mathopt LMO. And what this will do at every iteration is add a linear optimi uh, a linear objective to this problem and solve it using GLPK because the linear objective is change every time we change the gradient, so at every iteration, and then we just call JLPK to resolve it. And so this way we don't need to have like pre-computed or predefined LMOs, or we don't need to always know the closed form. We can just express it and then let it run. Right. Um, one nice feature we've had that's been fairly practical for, uh, really useful for some things, uh, is also some callback system where at every, so you can pass the system a callback, uh, and we've, which takes as input the state with various information, and so you can either print them or use them for some side computations at every iteration and so on. So this way you can also uh, fetch other information. Uh, for for example, we've been trying this for well optimizing machine learning systems, and then at every iteration computing not only the primal value on the training set but also the test value on some independent data. All right, um, I wrap up with some um, comparison of the Frank Wolf package with some other optimization systems in Julia. So the first one would be MOI, and in this I also include uh, the modeling systems, so jump and convex.gl. So these are based mostly on, you could say DSL, but this is fundamentally more of an API uh, for expressing uh, problems. And so this is nice because you can uh, create a lot of structure and this structure can be passed and exploited by solvers afterwards. Uh, this is but uh, this is lacking a bit more on the flexibility side uh, because you do need to express everything within MOI itself. You can't just have a Julia function and pass it to MOI um, or to Jump or Convex. Oh uh, yeah, and uh, so there is a nonlinear interface, but which is still very much not work in progress. And this is still to do within Jump. You can't ju you can't really just pass uh, arbitrary Julia code to your Jump problem, and this will. I mean, this will not work out of the box usually. Uh, another one that we've been looking at is proximal operators and proximal optimization in general, which is a really uh, well-established ecosystem these days. I mean, this, been, this has been worked on a lot. Uh, and this is also based on a DSL, which means you need to express your functions using uh, a kind of disciplined convex syntax or a disciplined convex grammar. Uh, and so you, used to, you need to use their atoms. This is not really Judea code. This is a DSL. Uh, on the other side of the spectrum, you have all the, or you have more of the nonlinear optimization uh, ecosystems. So mostly NL Sol and Optim on one side, and Smooth Optimizers on the other. So for these, you can just pass any uh, Julia code as long as you can compute gradient either through automatic differentiation, or if you pass gradients, or if you use some derivative-free algorithms, then th these will be fine, and you won't need to. Um, uh, you 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 won't need to like reuse their DSL because I mean there's none. You can just pass the Julia function, so that's great. Uh, but on the other side, the constraints are a bit more limiting. Uh, so on both sides, you have mostly uh, box constraints. So that means bounds on variables, uh, or in some cases, I mean uh, you have manifold constraints. Uh, but you don't really have um, you you don't really have like a richer set of constraints that you can exploit. Uh, I also kind of forgot here uh, manopt and as an optimization over manifolds which is already a kind of different beast because um, you do not so you 
you only expect to compute local solutions on, on manifolds, mostly, uh, if, uh, yeah, if I'm correct. Uh, and finally, so for Frank Wolf, uh, we express the objective as any arbitrary Julia code. And so this means you have way more flexibility on that side. And this is also way more approachable for users. Uh, and for constraints, uh, well, you are, in many systems, you do have a lot of very simple constraints or many systems as complex objective, but simple constraints. And so this is working really well for them. Uh, and otherwise, again, you can exploit the API so that we can leverage the structure of your constraints to uh, to make the system more efficient. All right, uh, to open on, on few perspective points. Um, so we have a lot of interest that was raised on uh, on the package and on what can be done with it uh, in, in different areas of research. And we also have like future potential directions and we would love to explore this with people interested, uh, interested also at JuliaCon. Uh, one of the uh, future promising directions is infinite dimensional optimization. So this works with Frank Wolf algorithms. They are not limited to finite dimension. Uh, I think there will be a talk on infinite opt itself, which I'm very thrilled to see. Um, we also want to have more Frank Wolf variants, uh, more LMO variants, more step sizes. I mean, the one that have been shown to work well uh, in practice or in theory or others. Uh, we want to integrate with our optimization ecosystems, so these I mentioned before, for instance, to so have an MOI based uh, or uh, an MOI uh, solver based on FrankWolf.jl, or have uh, M uh, Frank Wolf plugged into uh, smooth optimizers or, or Optim.jl or others. Uh, we also want to see if uh, how well this works on your challenging problem. If you have some, so feel free to try it and let us know if I mean this works or if it doesn't work. And uh, we also want to integrate any other uh, research going on on new uh, Frank Wolf modifications, so new variants. All right, um, that's it for me, and I hope to see you at JuliaCon.